Hello everybody, it's MagusX here, the Volatile Gamer. How y'all doing? This is going to be a two-part series. It's for computer craft, but I'm also using, uh, what is it, Red Power. But it's mostly for computer craft, and we're going to show you today how to do door security password systems for one person, and then the second part is going to be for multiple users and multiple doors. So you could have something like this, like this, now what is it, storage facility, I guess you can call it. So this is going to be if you're new to computer craft, never used it before, not sure how to even get going. Going. And then the second episode is going to expand on the exact same code that we're about to do right now. So let's get started. You're going to need to make a computer for this, obviously. Okay, and that is just stone, redstone, and glass. You won't need any of the red power stuff that I'll use in the second episode here. Just simply an iron door and some, some sort of, you know, reason to protect something, whether it be your house or whatever. So let's get started. We're going to open up the computer and let me show you a few things. You can type in help. It'll give you some uh, actual commands you could use. Uh, one, for example, would be programs. Excuse me. Programs. And it'll show you programs that you made and the default ones that are going to be on every computer. So to get started, I'm just going to reboot so we can clear the screen. And you can do that too if you ever want to restart your computer back to the Craft OS screen. And we're going to type in edit, and that'll create a new program if it's not already there. And we're going to call it uh, lock, I guess. So the first thing any door lock system is going to need is going to have to be os.pull event with a capital E equals os.pull event with a capital E once again and a capital R for raw. Okay, and that's going to make sure that the computer can't be terminated or technically hacked and that your system actually is foolproof and can't be broken. So we're going to start off with this. We're going to use a print command and that opens with a bracket and a quotation and I'm going to tell the computer to say hello user please input password and then we'll close it with a quotation and a close bracket and at this point we're going to get the actual computer to get the user to type something in and to do that you type in write and then it is uh, open bracket two quotations and a close bracket just like that so now the user will have an opportunity to write something in and we're going to take whatever he writes and we're going to store it in what is a variable and to start a variable which is basically a container for any sort of data so in this instance you know it's what the user put in so to actually make a variable first you're going to type in whatever you, the name of the variable you want it to be so uh, I'm going to call it password just keep it simple and then equals and to get it to equal whatever the user just put in, we have to type in io.read and open and close bracket like such. So, now we're going to do the actual check to see if the password is right. And this is where you get to set the password as well. And to do that, we're going to need an if statement. So, if password equals equals, and it's important that you put two equals there because there are other ways of doing this like equals, you know, there's those symbols as well, and those are for different mathematical procedures or checks and stuff. So in this case it's equals equals, and then in quotations you're going to put in whatever you want your password to be. So I'm going to say my password is 69. Psh, whatever. Okay, so if the password equals 69, then I want you to do this. So uh, just to be nice, I guess I will do a print screen again, and I'll say thank you have a nice day. Okay. Now, what's also going to happen is we actually need some redstone, and that's what's going to get your iron door to open. So to do that, you could type in rs dot set output, and the O in output must be capital. And then we're going to do uh, open bracket, quotation, and a direction. So you choose left, right, up, or down, and that'll actually say I choose right. It'll make the redstone signal go to the right of the computer, but it won't go to the other directions. So here we're going to choose right because the door is on the right, and then after that a quotation. Then you're going to put a comma, space, and then at this point it's rather true or false. In this case we're going to say true because we want the door to open, and then put another space and a closed bracket. Note that this space here is very important. You have to put it there, otherwise it won't work. Now, what we're going to do is, in, if we just leave it like this, well, it's not finished anyways, but if we were to finish it and leave it like this, it's going to open up the door, but it's, we're not telling the computer to close the door. So that's not really a security precaution. That's just stupid. So what we need to do now is uh, get the computer to wait a few seconds, and in this time, the, comp the actual user will have a chance to run through the door. So all you really need in this particular setup is two or three seconds. I'm just going to put two. So that's the sleep command there, and that's going to make the computer wait two seconds, and then we're going to do a rs.com 
dot set output don't forget your capital O and then we're gonna shut the door by going right quotation comma space false comma oh, I've got the E space close bracket so like so I know I mentioned an extra comma there, but whatever. All right, so now the door will actually close, but we're not completely done yet. We're going to have to finish up here. So what happens if the password is wrong? So we're going to continue our if statement here. So else, which means if password does not equal uh, 69, it's going to do this. And in this case, I'm just going to say print screen, and we'll say sorry, wrong input. And then you type in end, and that's going to end your if statement. We're done doing what we need to check, and we're ready to move on. Well, in this case, to move on, we're just going to shut down the computer. So os.shutdown, and then you need to open and close bracket. So let's see if that works, and make sure you stay tuned if yours works, because there's still something you have to do after this. We're not 100% done yet. So, oh, excuse me. So here we go, let's see if it works. We're going to type in a lock to run the program. Hello user, please input password. My password is 69. Thank you, have a nice day. Have two seconds. Oh, and I made it. And then on the other side, I just use a button to get through. You don't have to actually do that again. It would be a little bit annoying if you had to do it all the time. No, no one from outside could access that button if this was closed off, so it, it should work fine. So here's the second part, and you're going to need to do this as well, because if you don't, people will just be able to go up to your computer and go edit lock and oh look now I know the password so once again it's control when you're all done with your code you press control to access this enter to save and then control to access it again and exit so here we go let's actually do a startup and what we're, what that means is we're gonna make sure that the computer always runs this program when we start it up so we're gonna do it by doing this edit startup that's going to make a new command, a new program. So in here we're going to go shell dot run, and then in quotations we're going to put the name of the actual door lock door lock program. So here it's called lock. I will do it as such. Control and then save with enter, and then control move over with your arrows keys, and then enter to exit. So we need to reboot the program before that actually goes through. So goodbye, and boom, here we go. Now just to show you. As soon as you enter the actual computer now, it's going to go straight to the program. 69 will open it up, and then it'll close it, and it'll shut it down. And you'll have to, you know, press escape. So it is important to note that when you, as soon as you put in your password, you hit escape, and you have whatever you put set in your sleep to go through the door. So let's see what happens if we do it wrong. Sorry, wrong input. Now that you've done the actual startup program, though, you'll notice that if you, something goes wrong or if you need to edit it, it's like, oh, what am I going to do? Well, there is a way to that, and it, it, I'll show you how to do it whether you're offline or on a server, but you'll have to be the server owner, of course. Otherwise, you'll have to use actual computer disk. So what you can do if you're offline is go Windows key and R, type in your percentage, app data, percentage, and then you can go to dot .technic launcher or Minecraft if you're just doing this with modded uh, Minecraft. Minecraft, and you go into your actual, well here it's TechIt, but in your Minecraft you would just go to Saves, and then go to your world name, or then you could go to the actual computer folder, and then if it's your first computer, it's going to be zero, and so on, you just find whichever one's yours, and you'll see the programs are in there. So for me, it must be zero, yeah, here we are, and uh, you could actually just delete this. Now if you want to edit these, you actually can, I highly recommend that you get Notepad++, um, and I'll show you why. Let's open it up. So look at that. There's our actual program right here. I could actually use the mouse button now to move around. I don't need to use the arrows keys. And you could even go to language, and if you go into L, uh, you could set it to Lua. So look at this. Now it even highlights the specific parts of the code. So now you could just edit all your stuff out right out of here, and that's actually what we're going to do for the very next episode. So make sure you guys stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to expand this code to set it up for rather multiple people, or you could have an individual password for multiple doors. And if you are using a server, all you'd have to do is go into your actual server folder and then go into the world folder and there you'll see your computers and you do the same thing. So hopefully that's going to be helpful for you as well if you want to share some stuff with your friends but not your frenemies and uh, we'll go from there. So thanks a lot for watching guys. Hope to see you next time. Have a great day. MagusX says peace out.